Today we've got a new batch of spoilers, a new keyword, new champion, but what does this new champion actually bring? It's not really a new archetype, but it does buff a very important deck from set one I know a lot of people really love, so I'm super excited for it. So is it good? What cards are getting buffed? Where is the impact going to be? Let's find out. Trust nothing but your strength. To start things off, let's talk about our second confirmed keyword for set two, and that's vulnerable. And I'm sure other regions or the unspoiled region will probably get this, but that's for a different video. Uh, what this means, it's basically reverse challenger is what a lot of people are referring to it as. So you mark one of your opponent's units and then any one of your uh, you know, it's on your side of the board can then challenge it by, you know, drawing into combat as if it were like from Demacia or something. So this is actually really strong for overwhelm units, right? Where if they have low defense, you just want to get it off the board. Um, you want that damage to then also go over. It can really help you pierce through for some additional damage. Now, um, as of right now, right? Because with Sujani, it combines with the Frostbite is super strong. But again, I'm expecting us to see more of these cards come up in the future. But at least for now, this is kind of the first look that we have. That said, let's talk about it. Uh, and I kind of hinted at the start, right? Kind of a different type of deck that really gets buffed by this. You'll see it over the next couple of cards. But there was a list that popped up maybe about a month and a half ago now called Ash Reckoning or Noxus Ash Midrange. Um, and I forgot who designed it originally. I know there's a couple different variants of, of it floating around. But basically, you have... Freljord, Noxus, and five powered units at the core of it. And Sejuani found, finds a very nice spot in this list as well, just because it's a beefy unit. It has a five attack that you want, and it has Overwhelm. Now, the one thing I'm not too sold on about the card is that you've damaged the enemy Nexus five different rounds in the game. So, yes, you have Overwhelm in Freljord. You have ways like Might and Noxus. So, you do have a couple different ways to make sure you're getting that damage, but that is a very grindy level up condition. Um, that said, I think, you know, the on play is basically removal. It's a six drop for, so it has six HP. So it definitely checks that as well. Um, the only thing, you know, it's not going to hit right away is maybe a Scythria, but that, you know, Hey, you can't win against every six drop. That'd be too good. But again, that frostbite and vulnerable, just really getting to help you remove key cards in a combination that generally didn't have it. Right. So Freljord is very weak in their targeted removal. And this basically gives you that as an option. So this is a very welcome card for Freljord. And then again, thinking about what this goes into the Ash Noxus list, which, you know, had calling strike, um, and guillotine, which, you know, those are, are the both good, but it wasn't necessarily enough. And then with the guillotine, you didn't have the ping effect you needed to really reliably use it. So this is, you know, checking all the boxes so far. Again, the level up conditions, a little rough, but hey, it's uh, it's pretty good when it actually goes off. So what does it do, right? So she flips you. Let's say you've actually damaged it five times. Uh, again, so she's still going to retain the on play effect. But then the first time you deal Nexus damage, and it's really important, the first time immediately Winter's Breath is a card that does the same thing. You frostbite your entire opponent's side of the board. So what you do is you put her first. She naturally has Overwhelm, um, and then you get to make sure the rest of your units survive in combat. Not confirmed yet, but basically we assume is that then her spell card is going to be Fury of the North, which is also pretty strong. It's a plus four, plus four buff, which is huge. And again, keeping in mind, if they frostbite it or something, let's say it goes back down to zero, you just need, even if it's a single point of overwhelm, that's going to make a huge difference in combat. So Fury of the North being able to bump you back up to four. And as we know, kind of through other videos or you had the chance to play the game, uh, four HP is like a, a very important threshold. So that's a very nice to see that this is, the fact that this is, you know, not plus three, plus three, like let's say take hard, but plus four, plus four is, is a very sincerely big deal. So I'm very much looking forward to this. As you saw, the level up animation, it's its also really, really good. Not as good as Quinn, I'll say. That's my little disclaimer. Um, but I am still looking forward to trying to resolve this card, flipping it, and just getting the, the, the Winter's Breath or the Frostbite on the entire board animation is just so, so sweet looking. I, I need to play this to see it at least happen once. And again, I'm, I'm really excited unless, you know, I think Swain's the other confirmed one for Noxus. Unless he somehow finds a role, um, which I would doubt it, in that, like, Ash... Uh, Noxus list that I was mentioning, or the five power matters one, as we like to refer to it as. Uh, I think this is automatic upgrade. You know, you're not going to level it up every game, but just the fact that it gives you that more removal. Um, you know, six might be a little expensive, but it has a stat line behind it. I think this is checking all the boxes for Frail Yard. This is a fantastic card. I wish the level up was a little bit easier, but hey, you know, we just have to, you know, use the Fury of the North and Might to get our way there eventually. Some key, key cards help us get damage in. 
Um, and I know people were talking about PNZ in some other ways to like cheat in damage, but we'll talk about that a little bit more later uh, as we, you know, cover a topic on that. So let's talk about units, right? Let's talk about some of the other spoiled stuff. So up first, we have Ruthless Raider, which is a 3-1 with Overwhelm and <laughs> Toughness, right? So for just as a reminder, Overwhelm, any excess damage goes right to your enemy's nexus. Uh, and then the Toughness means that you take all damage reduced by one. So in this case, you know, a 1-1 one, one spider can't block this anymore. It has to be at least a 2-2. Two, two. Uh, keeping in mind, if we're thinking again about a may maybe more Freljord and Noxus list, or just because it's in Freljord, you still have access to things like uh, Elixir of Iron, which is going to help this card survive. You know, suddenly a 3-3 three, three with Tough is very hard to kill uh, for a lot of decks. So the fact that this naturally has Overwhelm on it, so then you also can do things like maybe Brother's Bond, right? This is a very aggressive card that um, I think is just going to pair well with Noxus. But again, because of Sejuani wanting to hit the enemy Nexus, five different times this is of course is just an enabler for the type of deck very good very on theme um and the artwork is just fantastic so all around fantastic card um I, this has to find a home i'm just convinced that it does and also the fact that it doesn't die to like you know vile feast withering wheel back type of stuff and static shock it's great in the current meta i'm sure there's more cards coming right we have 113 more cards to go but this fantastic absolutely solid card the one i haven't been seeing a lot of hype for um, and maybe I'm overvaluing it because I just love these types of effects is Ember Maiden. So round start, deal one damage to everything. So that means your Nexus, your opponent's Nexus, all units on board um, itself, right? So immediately I think about this is obviously good for Sejuani because it's going to get you like those automatic level up conditions you need. It's great for clearing spiders. It's great for uh, Braum decks. I want to get extra ping on them every turn. Uh, it's great for battle scars just in general. Vlad loves seeing this. Like there's so much that this does as an enabler. Now, you know, am I saying it's like some five out of five card? No. Do I think that someone's going to find a home for this and it does some really cheeky things? Yeah, like this is a very nice card and it, you know, is a ability where you can put yourself in situations where it's going to get you value over time. So I really like Ember Maiden. Not too much to say about it until we see more cards, but hey, I think it'll find a home eventually. Um, not nearly as good, you know, as the Raider per se, but I think this card is still fine overall. Um, it will be very interesting to see where this ends up. Uh, from there, we have Stormclaw Ursine. So this card, again, I've talked quite a bit now about the, the Ash Noxus 5 deck or the Ash's midrange. Other allies with 5 plus power have Overwhelm. So you basically, you play this and it's instant Overwhelm for your entire board. Uh, and then also Sejuani, once you, again, you hit the tower. I'm going to keep saying it or keeping the Nexus. Uh, it has Overwhelm. It's a 6-6. Six, six. It is a huge, like, this is, this is such a strong card. Um, and you'll notice that the rarity is missing. Um, and I think it's because they haven't decided maybe what rarity it's going to be. I'm assuming Epic because this thing's insanely strong. Um, but, you know, a 5 power, 6-6, six, six, just beefy units. Uh, I love it. I think this is also going to find a home. And I'm sure there's other decks that will play to it. But this is, again, I see this card. I instantly think of the Ash Noxus list. Uh, and the fact, again, getting them all overwhelmed just helps you do what you want to be doing in that type of list anyways. Um, and then even imagine, like, your Glory Seekers, the 5-1 with Challenger. Now, suddenly, those are not only getting to kill a higher-up unit, like a Garen, let's just say, because it's five, 5 against 5. Um you now have an option where, okay, maybe they have a, you know, a 2-2 two, two on the board. Now you can turn that into extra damage to your opponent's Nexus instead of just kind of running into a wall and then just letting it die type of thing, right? So it really helps you get a little bit extra value out of the cards you're already playing. So, um, you know, is it going to be a 3 of, a 2 of? Who knows what the curve is going to end up looking like, but I absolutely would expect this to see some place somewhere. Um, and then again, too, Demacia also has it more... Uh, five and six drop area. So I know there's been a like Demacia Freljord list popping around, let, let's say Hearthguard, right? So you just bump everything in your deck by plus one, plus one. So you just play like four drops and higher. Um, and then maybe you have like a Scythria on top of that, just give you that extra point of damage. Now, Fearsome and Overwhelm is probably a little bit of, of uh, too much, too much of a good thing in one deck, but I think it's still very strong at what it does. And I do really like this card as well. So again, you can probably tell that I'm a, I'm a Freljord person at heart uh, and I'm just really excited for it. So, what are like the cards that got buffed from this, right? I kind of said at the beginning of the video, I've been talking about all up to this point, but um, Assessor and Nox Noxon Guillotine, right? Like the fact that you can now ping your entire opponent's board and just decimate them. Um, now, of course, it costs three every time. So, you know, at most you're clearing four things, but this also then gives us the opportunity to play like a Noxus splash whatever list, right? 
So in this case, it's obviously going to be Noxus and Freljord, but hopefully we're going to see more of these ping effects generate over time. And because it is everything, right? So even if you're not playing it, uh, the, the ping effect, right? The Ember Mated, Noxus and Guillotine is just going to be get better because more people are playing it. So the, the person who, you know, is in that position is obviously doing something like Battle Scars. They're getting some kind of value out of it over time, but eventually they're going to have damage stacked on everything on their board and you can just clean up with the Guillotine. It's absolutely fantastic. And then uh, Trifarian Assessor, it, I love this card. I, again, to talk about Hearth Guard, you make it up to a 5-4 if you get to pl plus it once, or if you like, you hit it off an Omen Hawk. Um, and then because we have so many of these strong 5-power units, you're somehow now playing this mid-range game where you have very beefy units. You have 4 or 5 that are already on the board, either self-buffs or just good value tanks, basically. Um, you drop this, you draw 4 cards, and you draw into more Frost Effects and stuff, right? It's super strong at what it wants to be doing. Um, and, you know, at least for right now in, in terms of, I know this is more of the, hey, this is the Freljord spotlight, you know, type of thing. But these are kind of the two things that popped into my head right away uh, in cards that I'm really looking forward to now, even more so with set two. I know both these see play in, in respective decks, um, but I'm kind of looking forward to bringing it, on, bringing it all home and seeing how if uh, Noxian Guillotine can have some more play in the meta outside of just the uh, Ezreal Darius deck for right now. Uh, the one thing I do want to mention, at least with the wording right now and how the game is coded, we don't have a confirmation. So again, huge disclaimer, speculation. Uh, a lot of people have been saying P and Z right off the bat, which I get it. Mystic Shock, Static Shock, get excited. There's a lot of ways to make sure you get extra damage on your opponent's Nexus. And then maybe Sejuani is just kind of that like uh, more control aspect of a card. That, that might exist as a thing. However, I've seen a lot of people talking about Teemo uh, and Shrooms in general. I do want to clarify, it says deal one to your Nexus. So it is a self-harm. Yes, it's your Shroom going in your opponent's deck, but it's something that uh, is going to ping themselves over, over turn. So I'm assuming that this doesn't work. We haven't had confirmation any way, in either way, but um, if I remember correctly, Funsmith doesn't buff it. So then in the same kind of relationship there, it shouldn't work for um, Sejuani. So we'll see. But for now, hold off. Don't build the Teemo decks just yet. Let them let sit down, have a little break, have a little chat for a little bit later. Uh, but hold off, see how it comes. And I'm sure they're going to have some kind of confirmation um, probably by next week. We'll have it. Because I have asked a couple people, see if we can get confirmation for sure. By the time recording this, I didn't have it yet. So that's it. Those are the five new cards uh, that we're getting again. So we have, what, 113 more cards to go at this point. I put it in all one nice and easy image for everybody. I've already shared on Twitter all that stuff. Uh, people have seemed to like this format, and uh, I get it from the official Discord. So the official Legends of Runeterra Discord, I mean. So feel free to swing by there if you ever want to get these kind of immediately. Um, otherwise, feel free to grab them. Get, get at me on Twitter as well, at Cosmic Plays, to find it for your own, uh, for your own just to share out and get into your different gaming groups. But um, I like it. I think Vulnerable is... Uh, it's interesting to me that they showed it with uh, Freljord so early since I assume this is going to come with the new um, Undiscovered region, but we have to see. I'm sure Vulnerable will pop up in a few more places, and I really love that we don't have to rely on just Challenger anymore, and right, this is a way to try to balance out some of the other regions just so they have more options against a board-focused meta uh, for removal in this case, which is really, really important. So with that, another look. Awesome, awesome start to set two. Uh, again, personally, I like this a lot more than I like Quinn. Uh, I think Quinn will probably definitely be playable in an archetype. I'm waiting to see what other support that it gets. Uh, but at least immediately right now, these cards are great. Immediately going in a deck that already exists in set one, so it's only getting better. And that also says something really important about Riot, right? They acknowledge that they don't want to just build a set one archetype and leave it there right they're committed to making sure that new tools are getting introduced and you know this is half of the frail yord cards that we're getting so at, basically all of these go into that deck um you know maybe with this raider not so much but more or less these all go in that deck and it's great to see so okay we have what five more cards they probably are towards a new archetype or buff a different archetype of set one i love 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 what they're doing now hey right if you can pick up spoiler season again 113 cards ago uh 18 days or whatever it is at the time of recording this it's a lot of cards let's get on it but all right that's it for me today hope you guys enjoyed the video if you're looking forward to more rune terra content don't forget to subscribe and also as a reminder i stream monday through friday on twitch at 8 30 p.m eastern with that take care see you back on monday for more videos and until then see ya